Hey guys, I'm Nish. Uh, I'm the proud owner of a one of 25 RS6 Tribute in Nogaro Blue. So this car was one of 25 that Audi built. Uh, it was a called the Tribute Edition, uh, which paid tribute to the original RS2 built by Porsche and Zuffenhausen. Originally slated uh, to come out in 2019, but because of COVID, the car was delayed. So this car was delivered to us in October of 2020 as a 2021. Part of the build, uh, we got several leading companies together uh, to build truly a one-of-one -one from a one-of-25. So on the outside, you'll see this car looks a little different, um, starting with uh, that car was taken, uh, shipped from Audi Atlanta to down to Miami to Expel. The car was paint corrected. It's running a full Expel. Every part of the car has been Expel uh, PPF, including the interior. Working with Euro tuning uh, and with Maxton, uh, as long and with other providers, uh, we were able to get a Maxton body kit, a mix of their V1 and V2. Uh, Max in USA was gracious enough to be part of the build. Um, we then got different parts from Germany to uh, change. Uh, the front splitter and the, the side vents were replaced from black optics to silver optics. The mirrors were converted from the matching Nogaro blue to black. The idea was to take it from the Tribute Edition to the original Nogaro Edition concept. Uh, so what else has been done outside? So we've got uh, a, a titanium evolution exhaust from Akrapovic, uh, thanks to Euro tuning and turn 14. Um, we've got a splitter, rear splitter from Maxton, a bespoke one made uh, for this car. Uh, the car is lowered on links, uh, as well as it is running a set of BC forged uh, wheels with bespoke titanium hardware. Uh, and lug nuts uh, thanks to Euro tuning. On the inside, the car was, uh, has a bespoke uh, Alcantara headliner. It's running a denim stitching from factory, so it's got a matching uh, denim stitching enabled uh, Alcantara headliner that E3 Customs uh, down in South Florida built for me. Uh, it's got a center console from a European car, so it's got the carbon fiber or race aluminum, if you will. Uh, it's got a flat bottom steering wheel that uh, was replaced, uh, has replaced the round steering wheel with a 12 o'clock stripe, uh, matching uh, denim stitching by E3 Customs. Uh, the car has been enabled with matrix uh, lighting, a whole bunch of Euro mods. Uh, and then finally, of course, the intake from Unitronic and the, uh, the tune from Unitronic. So where did I start in the car scene, right? So I'm a relative, relative newbie. Uh, to the car scene. So um, recently, you know, Audi and Audi Club did a, a feature on us and our car, you know, a collection of uh, wagons, if you will. Um, and um, so, you know, initially when I was young, 18, uh, my, my, my dad had a car dealership, a Mercedes dealership in India. I'm originally from India. And uh, since my grades were great, uh, he had received a 944 Turbo, uh, brilliant silver, black interior, uh, as a trade for one of the Mercedes. So he gave it to me. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, my grades tanked and uh, quickly uh, the car was taken back and I had to walk to college. Uh, fast forward, uh, moved to the United States. Uh, my wife and I, uh, we decided that it would be best to focus on our career. So, you know, we had the regular cars, but really got into this, the, the Volkswagen Audi car scene uh, and was looking around to look for, you know, what would be the first kind of cool car uh, that would be kind of practical. Funny story, I was actually looking at a WRS STI because I was a big Colin McRae fan. Uh, went to the Subaru showroom and they're like, nope, don't have a car. Went to the uh, Mitsubishi, wanted to buy a uh, Evo. They didn't have a car uh, and said, okay, you know, what compares to these cars? And they said a Mark IV R32. Uh, well, um, saw the Mark IV R32 in deep blue pearl, fell in love, uh, bought that car straight um, off the lot, had it for eight and a half years. 
25,000 miles in and uh, we decided to sell the car and I was just testing the waters, put it up on Craigslist and literally went into a bidding war on Craigslist. Little did I know that the car would sell so fast. And three hours later, a guy had landed up on my doorstep with a cashier's check and I didn't even have a chance to take my stuff out. Long story short, uh, this, uh, this gentleman who picked up my car became really good friends. We lived in Virginia. We still kept in touch. Uh, we then happened to buy a, a, an A4 Avant S-Line, a B8. Um, flew out to LA, picked up the car, and that's when the love for Avants started. Um, shipped the car back. We, we actually brought our first son, Tyler, home in our uh, brilliant silver uh, A4 Avant S-Line, which had the S-Line package, Alcantara headliner, Bang & Olufsen, which was a really rare spec. Had RS4 wheels, B7 RS4 wheels. Um, used that car, but I always loved the B7 RS4. Um, it so happened, uh, I was thinking of importing one and quickly ran into a uh, sort of an issue where B7 RS4 Avance couldn't be imported. Lo and behold, my wife found a build, uh, a, a deep, a Cambridge Green Pearl a build uh, on Bringer Trailer. And this car was, you know, was getting all the traction online, uh, started researching about the build. And it so happened that I wanted to bid on the car and acquire the car. Um, my wife and I, Tara, we actually flew up to Connecticut to look at the car, test drove it. Uh, and um, I think I was the only buyer who the previous owner allowed to test drive. Um, we're about to bid on it and it just so happened the auction was ending on a Monday and I happened to have a important meeting on the West Coast. So I signed up for the profile with a credit card and I asked my wife to bid on the car. Uh, fast forward, the bidding happens. I told her to wait for the last two minutes to bid on the car. As she was about to bid the credit card, there was an issue and she couldn't bid. Luckily, the car went uh, reserve not met. So I reached out to the seller. We worked out a deal. Uh, three days later, I had bought the car uh, and I flew up to Connecticut. I had meetings in New York, took, a, took an Uber, picked up the car, and I drove that car from Connecticut down to Tampa. And I think windows down, it was the best experience, the B7 RS4 engine, the build. And uh, we had that car for two and a half years. Fast forward, um, we were informed that the C8 RS6 Avant was coming. We were gonna build uh, an Audi exclusive one. With Audi Atlanta, we got the opportunity to, uh, were offered one of the tribute editions. So we got our hands on this particular car. Uh, and then, that just snowballed into owning more and more RS cars or RS Avants. So we recently sold uh, the B7 RS4 and replaced that with a really rare spec RS2, the matching Nogaro Blue. Um, supposedly it is a one of 20 in the world with an early production non-airbag cat delete from factory. That car went through a resto mod uh, at Speed Sport Tuning with the help of Euro Tuning. We were able to acquire a whole bunch of parts uh, and has been built and now is with this car in our garage. So to, as of today, we have two really rare Nagaro Blue um, RS wagons in our garage. Um, every day, uh, wake up and we go to the garage and we're like, which one do we drive? So. My kids, my older one prefers this car because it's fast but luxurious. My younger one loves the old, the RS2, because he loves the raw power. So, especially when you go to Cars and Coffee, it's always that. But we love uh, our Audi wagons and hope to add more RS uh, uh, Avants to our collection. What piques my interest? Well, what attracts me to a certain car and why do I, uh, why do I buy certain cars? Um, I, I get asked that question pretty often. So, because um, you know, for me, the number one criteria is um, it, it needs to seat four people. So my family is always my number one priority. Um, so people always say, Nish, why aren't you buying a two door, a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or a McLaren? Um, I wish uh, they made certain cars that were practical 
that could seat four people that I could take to the grocery store, uh, as well as I could take my dog to the vet. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there aren't too many options. Second is, um, I always like buying cars that are, to a certain extent, rare. Um, so, you know, my wife tells me, you know, she's very, uh, she's truly my better half. She says, buy cars that appreciate. So, for me, that's a big factor. Uh, of course, uh, there is a trend here. I love blue cars. That is my favorite color. If it's Nogaro blue, that's perfect. If it's even a rare blue, uh, you know, an iris blue or a maritime blue, uh, clearly that piques my interest. Um, a car that's been documented, so my RS2, um, I'm the third owner uh, for, the, uh, for the car. The, own, the car was built or by, ordered by a collector in Spain. Uh, who then sold it to another uh, collector uh, in Spain uh, who has documented the whole car. So I have books and books of, uh, of the maintenance records. So for me, uh, I'm looking for a long-term relationship, if you will, uh, as well as keeping these cars uh, for a long time. So I don't like flipping cars. Um, I still have seller's remorse on my RS4. I would have loved to keep it, but unfortunately don't, didn't have the garage space. So for me to summarize, is uh, it's got to be rare hopefully blue got to be practical that I can actually you know take my kiddos um, and uh, it's not a money pit so I love maintaining cars I love uh, modding my cars but to a certain extent OEM plus at the end of the day uh, what I call is a holy grail cars right this is a holy grail car one of 25 my RS2 uh, I had posters of my RS2 uh, and the trend continues. So I do have a bucket list of cars uh, that I would like to accomplish someday. Uh, hopefully uh, my trend continues, which is one car a year. Um, so we'll see what I, what's in store for 2022 and 2023.